make sure you see you, Trina. No, don't hide. <laughs> don't hide. Don't hide. Don't hide. You come over here. <laughs> right over here. Monica, Jeff, you up? Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming. I am delighted to be joined today by our Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll, our Secretary of Transportation, Gina Fiandaka, our Undersecretary of Transportation, Monica Tibbetts Nutt, our Interim uh, GM, Jeff Gonneville, and also members of the DOT and MBTA staff. The Lieutenant Governor and I wanted to have an opportunity to um, join with our colleagues today. It was important to see for ourselves what so many Massachusetts residents experience, and that is actually riding the T. So we rode over here on the red line, had a chance to talk to, to passengers along the way, and also, importantly, had a chance to, to visit the control center. Um, impressive operation, both uh, with oversight over the rails uh, as well as, as the buses. And um, I think, you know, a couple things are, are, are clear and we want to make clear this morning. Uh, first of all, our message to all those who ride um, the T, the rails, the buses um, around this state, know that this administration and the collective efforts here are really, really focused on delivering a system that is safe, that is reliable. We want people to be able to use public transit. In fact, we met a couple people this morning on the way over who'd come in from Franklin, Mass, and instead of a drive that often takes two hours, uh, just 58 minutes to get in and get out. And that's, that's really important. That's the kind of service we want to be able to deliver. That's the kind of service we want to be able to incent. We know we want to get people out of cars to address some of our climate goals and needs, and one way to do that is providing transportation, public transit, that is safe and reliable. Uh, but we also know that this has been the subject of a lot of frustration. People around the state have made that clear. And we want to, first of all, make sure that people understand. We understand your frustration. We know the challenges it presents in terms of your ability to get to work, to get to doctor's appointments, just to live your lives. We understand people's frustrations with shutdowns, delays, uh, and the like. And again, our commitment is to working real hard to deliver a public transit system that is safe and reliable. And in fact, our economy depends on that. And that's what this administration is, is committed to doing. I also want to be clear that the Lieutenant Governor and I are very grateful to the hardworking men at the Department of Transportation and at the MBTA. The fact of the matter is there aren't enough of them. And that's something that we're keen on addressing, the real workforce shortages. But just having spent time today walking the halls here, um, we know that there are so many people who uh, are working so, so hard at that, and they will have the support of this administration. But clearly, clearly we have work to do. We rode a train over that was a train that goes back to 1986. And really that sits kind of in the middle of the pack in terms of the age of some of our red line fleet. And so we know the importance of, of getting uh, trains uh, manufactured, fabricated as quickly as possible for the orange and the red lines. We'll, t we'll talk about that. We also know how important it is to deliver the workforce. You probably want a couple of updates, which I'm happy to provide to you. Um, and then we're certainly going to have others speak and take questions. Uh, with respect to what's happening out in Springfield, as you know, um, information has come to light that uh, shows that there has been a significant, there's a significant delay in the delivery, the production and delivery of red and orange line cars. And the project is way behind schedule. Um, some alarming details have emerged about the quality of the production process. Uh, I want to thank the men and women who are working very hard at the Springfield factory. Our administration has been working very hard at identifying issues and developing a strategy. On a regular basis, the MBTA team has been uh, conducting site visits with CRRC to ensure that they're upholding contractual obligations and manufacturing the cars to quality standards. And problems are being corrected as they occur. I want you to know our team has a constant presence at the facility. This is an ongoing process and more needs to be done. The MBTA will be putting together an independent team of experts that will include management experts to evaluate what changes and process improvements need to be implemented now in order to accelerate the delivery of cars. The team will look into manufacturing, management, operations, delivery schedule, market conditions, as well as existing contractual terms. We have instructed this team 
uh, to take a deep dive into these existing challenges and think through our long-term needs and how we prioritize and make good on the expediting of the delivery of cars. Um, we understand that time is of the essence here and we are already underway on this effort since we became aware of it just a couple of weeks ago. Workforce, we also know that the root of so many of the challenges that we have seen uh, have, their, have their, their root in really uh, workforce issues, real, real constraints around wor workforce. We simply don't have enough trained workers to carry out essential operations. The hardworking men and women at the MBTA need more support. It's clear that previous hiring efforts have not produced the results that we need. You've already heard me pledge to include funding in my first budget to hire 1,000 additional workers focused on the MBTA operations. We look forward to sharing the details on that budget in the coming weeks, of course, but know that we are gonna look to work with our community colleges, our vocational schools, technical schools, apprenticeship programs to <clears throat> identify and train the next generation of workers. Labor and businesses are going to be strong partners in this effort as well. We wanna make these jobs more desirable and provide the training and the professional development opportunities to folks. It's especially critical for allowing our entry level workers uh, to come in. We, there are huge opportunities for advancement within the T. I can tell you this morning we talked to any number of dispatchers as well as those, for example, who are dispatchers in, in the bus department uh, who started as bus drivers. And then one thing they spoke about was uh, the opportunities for advancement that coming to work at the T afford you. So, you know, we want to have a clear pathway for onboarding people uh, through promotion, uh, beginning with a more streamlined hiring process. And I know this is a priority for Secretary Fiandaka, uh, and it will be for our, our GM as well. Uh, finally, when it comes to transparency, uh, I don't have to tell you that we need to do more when it comes to transparency around any delays, closures, incidents, and the like. We are committed to getting this information out to you faster and with more clarity. This is about rebuilding the public's confidence and trust in the transit system. So here are a few things that we're doing. You've read about slow zones. You're gonna see more communication about slow zones. Um, the MBTA is developing a detailed reporting system right now on speed re restrictions that will collect, monitor, and communicate slow zone information immediately to the public. This will be a very public facing report. Uh, we are aiming to post this information uh, as quickly as possible. The uh, T is also being very open and transparent about its response to the Federal Transit Administration's safety management inspection report. In a month or so, we expect that the T will be able to publish a response to the FTA's uh, report. This site, which will be on the mbta.com site, will be regularly updated to show the progress against the entire set of corrective action plans that the MBTA is working on. Riders will be able to stay completely up to date on how we are responding to safety concerns. We're talking about progress on fixing tracks, uh, more safety trainings, and how cars are literally being moved in and around the rail yards. Uh, we want to uh, communicate with complete transparency and, uh, and timeliness to the public. Um, and I uh, tell you, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. And I've told you from the outset, we will be transparent with whatever the facts are. The information um, that we provide we know is necessary for people to make decisions. And that's why we want it to be clear, we want it to be accurate, and we want it to be timely. We also are acknowledging the real difficult challenges that exist. Right now, with respect to an aging fleet and the work we need to do to make sure that we get uh, those, those, uh, uh, those uh, assets produced um, and online, and also the challenges that we have with respect to workforce. All of these things are things that we are committed uh, to working on. Um, we know that the people across the state deserve a first-class public transit system and that's what this administration is set about trying to do. And with that, I want to turn it over to our Secretary of Transportation, uh, Secretary Fiandaka. Thank you, Governor. And uh, it's really a pleasure to join you this afternoon. 
you know, back when I was commissioner of transportation in Boston, um, I was a regular T rider and I grew up riding the blue line. I know how important our transit system is and I know the role that the MBTA plays in our supporting our community. Uh, you know, we have so many extraordinarily gifted and dedicated employees here and people that work for the T and dedicated every day to making sure our transit system runs safely and efficiently. And we got to meet so many of them here today. Um, but at the same time, you know, we are well aware, um, as the governor underscored, of the challenges that we have ahead. And our administration and my leadership at the Department of Transportation here is dedicated to addressing these head on. You know, there's no time to waste with regard to doing the necessary hiring and the steps that it's going to take to fortify our workforce. They need the support and our community needs, needs good people here to deliver our services. And you know, the administration realizes what transportation means. It, it means opportunity, it means getting people where they need to go, when they need to go, safely and affordably. We're committed to those goals. As Governor Healy often says, we can't have a functioning economy without a functioning transportation system. And this transformative time in transportation and the MBTA, there's a sense of urgency to get things right. We have unprecedented opportunities ahead of us together and whether it's making the T safer or more reliable, advancing our critical capital investments, and updating design standards to make our infrastructure more resilient to climate change, and expanding our div diverse portfolio of healthy transportation options. I know that we're up to the challenge. I'm joined by Under Secretary Monica Tibbetts Nutt, and under the governor's leadership and the lieutenant governor's leadership, we're joined by interim GM Jeff Gonneville. This team is united in advancing these goals. And MassDOT and the MBTA are focused on creating a statewide network that is safe and equitable for all. And we'll continue to work jointly across our agencies, across the secretariat, across our divisions, and with our work workforce and our partners and our community and take these challenges on together. So thank you all for being here, and, and thank you, Governor, for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. We welcome any questions? Um, you're about a month into the job. Yes. What is taking so long to hire an MBTA general manager and a transportation team? How, what's the holdup? I don't think there's been a holdup. I think we've moved really quickly, um, as expeditiously as possible, also as thoroughly as possible. This is a really important position. Both are really important positions. We've got to have the strongest GM in place as possible. We also made a commitment to a new position, which is a transportation safety chief. Never been done before, but this administration sees that as something that's important so that we can have a person there responsible for safety inspections across the entire fleet. Um, we committed to moving through a process with a, a search firm so that it could be extensive, um, and we committed to doing it as soon as possible. And I think weeks ago, when we were at the Everett Garage, I was asked the question, and I said then, it would be uh, uh, weeks, not months, not years, and we are going to make good on that. So you will, you will see we've moved uh, quite a ways through the process, and we hope to have uh, information on that real soon. But those are really important decisions, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we had the opportunity to, to undertake the search. The uh, stigma that the T has. A lot of people just will not get on it. They just say it's, it, they, they hear the stories. Is there a marketing plan or just something to make people think that the T is reliable again after you, of course, make it reliable? Well, look, we want to acknowledge the real difficulties people experience, right? I mean, I, you know, I understand people's uh, people's issues and concerns with, with and, and questions about taking taking the taking the tea, uh, taking the trains, um, and that's why we're so committed to, to, to getting this right. But, you know, part of it is telling the stories, the stories of, of the, the two women we met this morning. Uh, one is a regular commuter rail rider, and her friend is going to be going to regular um, doctor's appointment visits here in Boston from Franklin and is going to need a regular and consistent way, reliable way to come in. And her friend took her today on, on the commuter rail and had a terrific experience, and she's not going to drive again into Boston, she said. So that's a positive story. The lieutenant governor, as some of you may know, has been regularly taking the commuter rail as lieutenant governor um, once a week. And, 
you know, maybe you want to speak to, to some of these experiences. But, you know, part of it is actually talking to the public, too, about the good things that are happening um, and the ways in which, you know, you can have a great experience on the commuter rail on the T. And I say that knowing that there is work to be done. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is a system. We are working to improve it. Um, and we are going to do everything we can to, to make it better for people. And, you know, for those of us committed to addressing real issues around climate, we have to get cars on the, off the road. We have to get people um, making, making uh, use of our public transit system. Now, if you want to say anything more about... I mean, we don't want to understate the, the challenges, but we certainly don't want to overstate them either. I, I've been taking the commuter rail in. It's a smooth ride. It's frankly an easier way to get into Boston. The two individuals we talked to today really shared their experience that it's way easier than driving. So mm -hmm. we need people to understand that it's not perfect, but it's not so imperfect that you shouldn't be riding it. Would you do marketing, though, to get that out there? I think there's a lot of work to do, and certainly that's why we're excited about bringing on board a new leader, recognizing how we can make sure folks know coming out of this pandemic, this is a mode of transportation that we all need to rely on, and we're not only are we going to make it safe and reliable, we also want to make sure people know it's fun and easy. Um, it's a lot simpler to take the treat to tea in than it is to drive most well, days. In terms of, in terms of the situation in Springfield mm -hmm. and CRRC, they have very little prospects of future contracts necessarily in the U.S. So is there any, um, you going back and looking at the contract there, and also um, are there concerns that that might be a disincentive for them to meet their contract deadlines and to provide future replacement parts for these trains in the future? Well, uh, I mean, I mean, to go back a little bit of the history on this one, this was a deal that was struck many, many years ago. Uh, unfortunately, during the Trump presidency, certain actions were taken that definitely impacted the work that they are doing here domestically. That said, they have existing contracts, and we want to make those contracts work. And we want to make sure, as I say, that we have the right team in place, which is why we've assembled a team of independent experts who are going to do two things. One, look at the contractual terms and what we need to do to rework things to expedite, accelerate the delivery of those uh, cars. And two, look at it from a real operational standpoint, what's happening at the facility, what needs to happen at the facility, again, to expedite, accelerate the delivery of those cars. So we proceed with, uh, with confidence about this and with determination to get this done. So you know, it's still to pursue damages in the contract? I think it was something like $500 per car per day, if I remember correctly. The, look, there, there are contractual terms there, but, you know, our focus is actually getting the cars done, you know, getting them fabricated and getting them online. And that's why you're – that's where you're going to see uh, – that's where you're going to see our efforts. You're we're going to do everything – I'm confident. Are you confident that that can happen? Yeah, I'm confident that we're going to make that we're going to do everything we can to make that happen. Absolutely, it has to happen. It has to happen. We've got to figure out a way to make this work. And you know, unfortunately, as sometimes is the case, there are intervening forces, intervening market forces, intervening worldwide forces, intervening geopolitical forces. So we're coming into this three weeks ago. Uh, we've got a great team assembled. We're just we've just become aware of it. And I think we've taken an important first step in getting this team of experts together to quickly go out, assess, evaluate, and get back to us with what we need to do to accelerate the delivery of the fabricated cars to, uh, to, our, to our fleet. Has there been a talk about the contract? Um, sorry? Um, what would it take to not move forward with the contract since there's been so many issues? Has there been talk of breaking that and going with another company? No, right now we're, we're, we're engaged directly with, with our contractual car company and, and the partner. There. Governor Healy, um, Governor Baker fought to take control of the tea was a source of huge frustration for him, as we know, and maybe the, the biggest fail of his, of his uh, governorship, which was certainly successful. Do you feel that direct oversight from your office is still necessary, and are you concerned about the federal oversight that continues? Well, I guess a couple of things on that. One, we have federal oversight right now, and as I said, this administration is committed to being very clear about the steps we're taking, the corrective actions we're taking against what the FTA has put forward in terms of a safety plan. And as I said, uh, we will be publishing next month our uh, progress against the FTA's recommendation. We're in touch with the FTA, and we will continue to be. We continue to uh, welcome that partnership, essentially, in terms of identifying what needs to be done. And, you know, safety has been always top of mind for the LG. And, and myself. It's why during the course of the campaign I called for the appointment of a transportation safety chief. So number one, we're going to be attentive to that. We welcome the federal oversight. We're working to, um, to make progress and, and make right what needs to be made right uh, under, under the terms of 
what the FTA has said. Um, number two, with respect to, to oversight, all this is to be evaluated, okay? What I am pleased about is that we have a terrific team assembled here. We've got tremendous um, uh, men and women working across the MBTA and across DOT. I've spoken to the workforce challenges, and I want to be crystal clear with people out of the gate in our administration what the real challenges are. We have a problem in Springfield. We identified that a couple weeks ago. We put together a response plan to deal with that. We've identified real workforce challenges. I put forward a budget proposal to, to help address some of that. I think that we have to do not only a marketing effort to get more people to make use of our public transit system, but also to explain what's available in terms of or a real wonderful work opportunity within uh, these agencies. So we've got, we clearly have work to do, but you know, we're committed to doing that. Uh, and we come in with, with a mindset around getting, around getting things done. <laughs> We're going to have to evaluate. Right now we're about identifying the right person. Um, and, and clearly the priority is, is getting somebody in place, getting a transportation safety chief in place. And as I said earlier, we hope to have uh, news on that in the near future. Yeah. You made a lot of budget about yeah. transparency today. So yeah. what do you think you'll take full responsibility for the key failures that the Monday continue to happen? Well, I think as governor, I'm ultimately responsible. And, you know, ultimately that may be may not be the most politically correct answer for me to offer you, Lisa, but understand that as governor, uh, whether I have responsibility or not, I view it as my responsibility to do everything I can to marshal the team, to marshal the resources, to be transparent with the public about what's actually going on, what the needs are, to not hide the ball on anything, and to try to uh, work our tails off every day to, to deliver and make better on any number of fronts, um, transportation, uh, the lack of housing across the state, the work we need to do around meeting our climate goals. Um, there are a lot of challenges right now across this commonwealth. A lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are dealing with affordability issues. But um, the reason I sought this position is because I think, and the reason that the LG did as well, is because we're willing to acknowledge those challenges and, and try to turn those challenges into opportunities and try to collectively find ways inside and outside of government to work together to move us forward. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Governor, you mentioned a lot about transparency and safety today, and all the improvements to come. But what about right now? How transparent can you be with the public about the safety of the T today, right now? And with the storm, with the cold weather coming, can you also speak? Sure, absolutely. Um, we're going to be transparent about uh, everything with regard to safety. Safe, safety is absolutely paramount. Um, with regard to the cold weather this weekend, I invite a um, interim GM. Jeff Gonneville to, to speak on that. Um, we know that, that uh, and steps have been taken and I feel confident about uh, the, the system's capacity to, to handle what comes our way. But Jeff, is there anything you want to say on that? Sure. I mean, uh, I think many of you are aware that the, the, the excuse me, yes, yeah, sorry. So I'm sure many of you are aware that obviously the, the extreme weather conditions do have an impact on our system. We prepare for that months in advance of this. So there are a number of things that we're going to be doing. Um, for instance, we store trains in the tunnels. We have crews, our maintenance teams, that are actually working on all of our vehicles to ensure that their air systems, which control our doors, control the brakes on the system, are all going to be prepared and ready for this. Uh, we're, going to have, uh, we're going to have also crews that are there and ready to address any rail issues or power issues that may, may uh, occur throughout this entire process as well. So there are a number of things that we really are doing to focus in, to be ready for really the extreme cold temperatures that are going to be happening as well. Yes, yes, we do. And that's something that we, we are obviously watch very closely and it's something that we, we remain very focused on. But right now, as we're heading into these cold snaps, yes, we have the people that are available in order to be able to support us. Thank you. How is your administration you know, preparing for the cold and Thank you. You know, getting ready for, for that with you know, reaching out to vulnerable residents and things of that nature? Yeah, well, it's super important. And as with any, um, as with any, uh, severe weather coming in, in this case it's really cold weather we know coming in, uh, we've reached out to service providers um, both at, at the municipal level across the state but also the service providers who are there particularly looking after those who are particularly vulnerable, um, those who are, um, uh, who are in need of shelter and so we're going to continue to keep a pulse on that. Um, as you know I made a decision to 
make South Station open over the weekend on Friday and Saturday evening for those to, to shelter in place. We, of course, encourage people to go to shelters, to, to take advantage of, uh, of shelters, and there will be, I know, through our service providers, uh, transportation available to get people there. Um, so we strongly encourage that, and I would encourage the public to look after your neighbors, check on those who are, who are vulnerable, uh, particularly our seniors, but uh, anyone you know um, who may be vulnerable in this time, and I'm confident we can get through it as a commonwealth, but certainly it looks like we're going to get some real cold weather over the next couple of days. So be safe, everybody. Thank you very much.